Hey everybody, this is Paul. Um, in the last tutorial, we just finished creating the public section for the stack class interface. So now let's go ahead and start defining some of these functions in a file that we're going to call stack.cpp. So clicking on the projects tab here, and uh, right click on the source files, and then hover over new and select C++ source file. And then I'm just going to name this new source file stack and with extension cpp. So this is going to be a stack.cpp file and that's going to be placed here now in uh, the source files folder. So now we've got stack.cpp open and we're just going to include a few libraries first and we're just going to do pound include and then we're just going to include the C standard library and then we're also going to include the iostream library. So now we've got those and then we also need to tell our stack.cpp file that we're going to also need it to include the file that we just created which is stack.h and then we need to tell it that we're using the standard namespace so using name space standard okay so now we've got all those basics in there so now we're going to start defining some of our functions so let's just go ahead and give ourselves a little bit of room here and then what we're going to do is we're going to tell it that we're about to define something from the stack class so the way we do that is we just do stack colon colon and then NetBeans gives me these options it says okay you probably want to define one of these and I want to define this one right here which is the constructor so I'm going to define the constructor now and then I'm just going to do an opening and closing curly brace and then all I really want my constructor to do is I just want to make sure that when I create a new stack object that the stack pointer is not pointing to anything at all. So that's all my constructor is going to do. Whenever I create a new stack object, it's just going to make sure that that stack's stack pointer is not pointing to anything. So that's what the constructor is going to do. So next we're going to just do the deconstructor. And so we're going to define that from the stack class once again. And it's going to be this one right here with the tilde in front. So that's the deconstructor. And then we're just going to do opening and closing curly braces. And so inside of here is basically what is going to happen to our stack once our stack is being destroyed. Once it's going to either be deleted or our program ends, it's going to call the deconstructor and kind of do whatever is in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first create a couple of item pointers. So we're just going to call one of them P1 for pointer one, and we're going to do another item pointer, and uh, we're going to call that one P2 for pointer two. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make P1 point to whatever the stack pointer is pointing to. So we just do P1 equals stack pointer to accomplish that. And so now one of two things is going to happen. We either have a stack that is already in existence. And if that's the case, this will make P1 point to the top of the stack. The other thing that could happen is we don't have a stack yet. And that would make P1 point to null since basically when our stack is empty, that's the stack pointer is going to be pointing to null. So P1 is either going to be pointing to null or it's going to be pointing to the top of the stack by doing this statement here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say while p1 is not equal to null, so that means we are pointing to the top of the stack. Whoops, there we go. Okay, so while p1 is not equal to null, that means we're pointing to the top of the stack. Then we basically need to delete that item, and then we need to move p1 to the uh, item below, and then keep deleting all the way down until we get to the very end and the very end is going to be marked with a null and so we will know when we're at the end and we won't x or we won't enter this loop because p1 will then equal null once we've kind of gone through the entire stack so what we're going to do now is we're going to say pointer 2 is now going to point to whatever pointer 1 was pointing to and then pointer 2 is actually going to be the one that's going to kind of be doing the deleting so p1 is now just going to move to the item below so P1 is just going to now just say P1 equals P1 arrow pre. So this is going to make P1 point to the item below the top now. And so now what uh, we're going to do is, I don't really think you have to type in this next line of code, but I'm going to do it anyway because it's going to kind of separate the item that P1 is pointing to. 
it's going to separate this item from the stack. And so I'm just going to say p2 prev equals null. And so now that item that p2 was pointing to that kind of was the top of the stack is now not going to be pointing to anything. It's not going to be pointing to the item below anymore. So it kind of just separates it. And then we're just going to delete the item that p2 was pointing to. So p2, um, let's see, we're just going to say delete p2. So we're basically deleting whatever was on the top of the stack. So, and it looks like I spelled delete wrong, D-E-L-E-T-E, -E -E. there we go. So that's all we really need to do for the um, deconstructor. So let's just go ahead and go through this really quick one more time. So the deconstructor is just going to be called when our stack object is going to be destroyed. And it's going to create two pointers, P1 and P2, and both of those can point to an item. P1 is going to point to whatever the stack pointer points to. So if there is an existing stack, then P2 will enter this while loop, and then it will make pointer 2 point to the top of the stack. Pointer 1 now points to the item below. Pointer 2 disconnects that top item from the stack, and then it deletes that item. And then what happens is now P1 is pointing to the item that was below the top. So now P1 is pointing to basically the new top, and then P1 keeps entering this while loop until it's pretty much had P2 delete every item on the stack. So that's how the deconstructor is going to work. So in the next uh, few tutorials, I'll continue to define the other functions that uh, we uh, typed in the interface file. So stay tuned to see the other functions for the stack class defined. So we'll see you guys in the next few tutorials. And uh, you guys have an excellent day. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.